This is another session of Sundays with Hank. This session is Chapter 2, Rooster, Cigars, Mop, and Tattoos. Hank loved to shock people. He once had a pet rooster that he led around on a leash. That's right. <laughs> A rooster on a leash. I don't think I ever saw that before that or after that. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, in my head the rooster's name was Roger, but uh, I don't know if that's what the rooster's name was. He would come up in his old green Ford and proceeded to take this rooster on a leash <laughs> all over the ball field. You know, Hank always had to be different. Hank's look was different too. His face, uh, you know, Carl said that uh, he was clean shaven all the time. There, there were times I would remember he'd have day old stubble, kind of like these ball players do nowadays. <laughs> One, two, and three day old stubble on their face. He always had this unlit cigar too that would dangle from his mouth. I don't know if I ever saw that cigar lit up. I don't know if I ever saw smoke come out of his mouth. He would chew on that cigar. <laughs> Sometimes it would fall apart and I'd, he'd get it all over himself. But anyway, he always had long pants on and long sleeve shirt and his shoes of the dress type and they were usually polished. His complexion was rough and ruddy. His body and face looked much older than the 40 something that he was. Caring what others thought of his appearance never entered in his mind though, or at least it didn't look like it on the outside. His speech was rough and at times he would stammer a little his eyes would flutter or he would close them as he as he would stammer. And when making a point, he sometimes would grit, grit his teeth and every muscle in his body would tighten up. And the way he blew his nose, he would grab his nose between his forefinger and thumb lean his head forward a little, blow his nose, and let it drip to the ground. I don't think I ever saw him use a handkerchief. He probably carried one, though, and he probably used one. But it seemed like he blew his nose a lot. He just, he'd do it during a ball game while he was talking to you. <laughs> he'd just lean over and blow it out there on the, on the ground. And I guess he did take out his handkerchief then and wipe his nose off. He never had an embarrassed look on his face. He may have been embarrassed, but it uh, sure didn't look like it. At times, I thought Hank wasn't a very understanding man. As time went on, though, uh, I found that he understood people all too well. <laughs> he wasn't afraid to let anyone know how he thought about any kind of relevant or ir irrelevant issue. <clears throat> we very seldom saw him in the fall or winter. I guess Hank pursued his other causes during baseball's off season. He never spent much time watching uh, other sports unless he had an idea to share about baseball or wanted to make a statement about something that he thought was wrong with our society. You see, Hank saw things in a different light. He wasn't concerned with material things. Hank was only concerned with a few simple things like baseball and nature. Not too many people would listen to him because of the way he looked and dressed and because he had no regular job that he could lay claim to. Most adults are concerned with issues like the type of car you drive or how much money you make and have. People also give you the looks test without even knowing they're doing it. It reminds me of a story out of the book the Little Prince, where there was a man uh, dressed up in either Turkish or Indian garb, 
and this man was addressing a very important meeting about a topic he knew a lot about but no one took his ideas seriously because of the way he dressed now this same man in a fancy three-piece suit a few years later gave the same speech about his ideas and they accepted it and they thought well it, it was great but it was because of the three-piece suit he had on anyway his ideas were received with open arms, and most of us fall into that trap. Not Hank. What you saw was what you got. Hank didn't like the long hair of the 60s. I really think he didn't like it because it took away from the clean-cut image of baseball. Well, anyway, Hank took a stand against long hair. And as I said before, we didn't see Hank much at basketball games in the winter, but there was one time when he attended a game, and he carried a mop with him. That's right. M-O-P. A mop. Hank was known to carry unusual items with him like the rooster and now the mop. And uh, it wasn't too much of a surprise to see something unusual like that. But it was at a basketball game. I bet some people did wonder what, they, what he was going to do with that mop. Maybe he thought the team or coach was horrible and needed mopping up. Well, it didn't take very long, though, to find out what the use of the mop would be. Hank sat in the middle of the gymnasium on the front row of the top section on the south side. He stood the mop up with the head of the mop up in the air, the handle resting on the wooden floor. So he had the mop handle in his hand. Hank then took his hat off if he had one on and draped the mop head over his head, forming a crude sort, sort of looking wig. Some people were confused and didn't know what it stood for. I don't know whether I heard it at the game or later at school just why Hank wore that mop on his head. You know the old saying that has something to do with hair looking like a mop? Well, someone figured it out. I don't think Hank ever said why he did it, but we kind of figured Hank was showing all those long-haired hippies just what he thought they looked like. Hank frequented some of the local drinking clubs and would on occasion let his opinions flow. He was so fed up with some of the customers and their long hair that one day he took his gun in with him and laid it on the counter right next to a couple of guys with long hair. He proceeded to talk about how he hated long-haired people and that he had the cure for long hair. Those guys all scattered very quickly. Never had much to do with Hank after that. I wonder what Hank would have thought of other crazes and fads like tattoos and guys wearing earrings and earrings being worn on all sorts of body parts. He probably would have thought it was okay, just like uh, I think any of that stuff's okay. It's just whatever a person wants to do. But I'm sure he would have come up with a way of making a statement about that like he did the hair. Uh, I'm just kind of putting my own words here because he didn't actually do this. But I could just picture him doing something like this. Leading a pet pig with a nose ring or earrings on it. And uh, he himself might have worn the largest, gaudiest clip-ons all over his clothes and body. He might even have put a large ring around his neck to top it off. And the tattoos, he probably was okay with those too. He would probably have worn a full-face tattoo, maybe even the likeness of somebody like Ronald Reagan or George Bush. I'm not sure how many times... Hank used the mop head to make his point, but it certainly got the message across. And it was an event that some people still remember many years later. And that's all for this session of uh, Sundays with Hank. I'm trying to keep them short. And uh, next time, uh, I'll be talking about some other <laughs> events in this man's life. Thanks for watching.